Good morning, everyone. Uh, appreciate y'all being here uh, this morning. We had a, uh, a little bit of a shortened practice, a big special teams emphasis. Uh, with, you know, I was really, really kind of pleased with uh, the special teams work we were able to get. Uh, tried to tried to work out the, some offensive defensive situational uh, work, two minute drills, uh, end of game scenarios. Um, you know, it was a uh, an introduction to those situations. Obviously, things that we're going to continue to clean up and and improve on. But uh, it's good to be able to get those uh, uh, on tape and be able to teach and grow from there. But uh, I thought all in all, the uh, special teams work that we got was. Uh, really productive. The guys are taking a lot of ownership uh, in in their roles and responsibilities. We've got a lot of competition in our special teams unit, so we're excited to see that continue to progress. All right, good seeing you guys. First question will be Ira from Morgan. Manage the load a little of balancing how hard you go every day i'm sorry Eric. can you say it again I'm, I'm sorry when with the pre, with preseason being longer this year because you have that extra time before the season opener do you have to like do any like load management like they do in the nba where you have to kind of balance um maybe how much you're working guys from day to day to to make sure you're not overdoing it with the extra time well that's something that we look at that every year um you know obviously the with the, the extra time that will change, you know, our post camp schedule just a little bit. Um, you know, I think there's, you know, going through fall camp is um, you know, one of the, 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 the critical building blocks to, to our program and, uh, you know, going through some of the, the challenges, you know, obviously this is a, a unique year with, with uh, COVID and uh, the extended time off um, with, with uh, not having a full summer of mandatory uh, activities, and and so you know, we've we've adjusted the normal workload of what we do uh, throughout this fall camp, and we're definitely being smart with our guys. So we're tracking everything um, that they're doing you know, through GPS or workload studies. Um, you know, trying to compare that to uh, you know across the board in, in, in all aspects. But um, you know, we're we are going to uh, adjust a little bit once we get you know past camp and uh, making sure that we're preparing our guys, but it's also being, being smart with them physically to get them to the best position they can be in for uh, September 12th. Hey, Mike, I was wondering, uh, who are some of the options that are emerging for you guys at both punt returner and kickoff returner? Uh, yeah, um, you know, on punt returner, you've got Keyshawn Hilton, Miko Dotson, that have really kind of uh, you know, jumped up into the competition and, and really done, done some, some nice things. Um, you know, I like, uh, you know, Miko was a, was a punt returner uh, there at his previous institution. Obviously, Keyshawn, um, you know, DJ is, are all guys that have, that have done that uh, in the past. And so um, that we've had, I thought like we've got a, a good competition that's going on with that. Um, but, you know, trying to get a lot of different guys' looks to see who's uh, most comfortable. Also put the Asante Samuel back there, and he's looked, uh, put him, you know, back the last few days. Um, and he's, he's, in that, he's very natural as well. And so excited about uh, you, you seeing that, that competition continue to develop. Good morning, Coach. Hope you're well. I know the way the schedule came out, it really didn't affect your guys' preparation. Uh, but how keyed in were maybe the support staff for that West Virginia game? And, how much of a of sort of a pivot did they have to make when when the schedule did get changed and you open up with tech? You know, it's uh, you know, as we go into the summer each year, um, you know, we try to have a uh, an advanced plan as coaches, you know, support staff. Every you know, everything is uh, you operating months in advance, and so you know, we we spend time uh, you know game planning for West Virginia uh, you know, throughout some of the. Uh, the downtime that we had throughout the quarantine um, had a uh, you know, real jump start on them. Um, but, you know, the, especially being year one, you, you know, we're still trying to figure out what we're good at. And so we, did, we didn't, didn't really overdo it. Um, you know, when the possibility of a conference-only schedule started being discussed, um, you know, we backed off on, on the amount of time of, uh, you know, opponent study other than uh, the ones that we knew. Um, that we're, we're going to be a real potential. And so, um, you know, we, there was a game plan. There was, you know, our sports staff did have everything set uh, for that, for that uh, season opener against West Virginia. But, you know, just like, just like everything else, it's changed. And uh, we've had to adapt and, and adjust um, to, to the new schedule and trying to still capitalize on, 
on the little bit of time that we have uh, to, to get a preliminary you know, game plan and, and reports uh, ready. Hey, Mike, to follow up on that, are you ex still expecting uh, an announcement or news on the uh, non-conference game here in the next couple of days? And, and once that's firmed up, what do you kind of, what's, what's the process that you guys do to get everything ready to go in the background while you're still working on camp? That, that's something that's a, you know, a, I guess a, a evolving process to get that finalized. Um, you know, there's a lot of moving pieces that, that go into that. You know, it's a um, you know, administrative uh, uh, ultimately decision, but, uh, you know, there, we've had some good discussions are, are uh, working through different options and I hope that we'll get that resolved here soon. Back to uh, you, you answer the question there. I'll, I'll pivot, I guess, back to uh, just nuts and bolts football with you guys. I think eight was maybe the number either you or, or Coach Atkins threw out there in terms of the amount of you know options you want to have on the offensive line. Uh, how is that sort of coming along? Uh, you know, two days after the scrimmage, is there a little bit more clarity in terms of who can play where? Oh, well, I, I guess I, I know I said eight. I'd love to have 15. Uh, yeah, and I'd love that that option actually. Um, but you know, it, year in and year out, if you if you can go into a season with eight, um, you know, guys, eight or nine, depending on position, you know, just to have that constant, uh, uh, you know, uh, competition, but also the, the the ability to to have that cohesiveness within that group, and you know, making sure that you're working the pairs. Um, you know, most people watching the game don't don't realize the. Uh, the communication, the anticipation of, of the move of the pass off, the, you know, the different ways that those guys all have to work together. Um, it, it's a, it takes a ton of repetition. And, you know, if, if we can get eight guys that uh, can all operate as one group, barring different, different positions and, and where they need to, to be in a line, uh, I think that puts us in a really good spot. But, uh, you know, it's hard to get to that point. Uh, you know, some, some years it's, it's six or seven, you know, uh, on, on good years, you know, eight, nine, ten would it would be really nice. So uh, we'll just continue to to push uh, young guys along, and uh, you know, obviously, uh, even with the older guys, they're competing for a, for a spot and a role in the depth. Hey, um, I don't know. It just seems like a real unique situation to have two senior centers, um, and I know Babyon has has played a lot more than Andrew. Um, What's that competition been like? And if if one of them doesn't win, is there a chance that the other one could help you out at a different position? Oh, absolutely. And I mean, we're you know we also have uh, Ray Smith has been been getting uh, a lot of reps there at, at center as well. I think he's got um, you know, he's got a good really good skill uh, skill set. Um, you know, he's he's thrown himself into that competition, and um, you know, we're looking for the, the best spot, whatever whatever combination that is. Um, you know, Mo's able to play some, you know, I think it was four games last year. Um, you know, was able to get that experience. Uh, you know, Baby and obviously has played a lot of a lot of games here. Um, you know, he does have flexibility to move to guard and the same as Baselli. So, um, you know, we're the competition is real in life. And uh, we're we're trying to make sure that the, the best five guys, the best combination uh, to put us in a in a position to be successful, that's what we're gonna go with. You know, Coach, I think you mentioned that with the quarterbacks early on, everybody was pretty much on the same spot because of the way the install was working. Is that also the, the same sort of thing apply to the offensive line or do those live game reps that they've had previously just really make a difference regardless of the scheme a, a team wants to run? Uh, it's, it's, it, there is a new language, uh, you know, you know some things that they uh, – differently that they're asked to do. So, you know, we try to give everybody a, a clean slate uh, when it comes to – the, the game reps that they've received, you know, some are good, some are bad, um, you know, but you truly, truly trying to rely on, on what we see in practice every day. The scrimmages are great. Um, you know, the times where, where coaches aren't, aren't, uh, you know, on the field uh, to, to assist in any way, just, just to see how those guys go out and operate. And, uh, you know, every year is different. You know, there's no, no offensive lineman that we had that was here last year in the same place as where they were. You know, they've all improved, they've all gotten better. Um, you know, we're, I'm excited about the group, excited about the youth, um, and the guys with a lot of experience after a lot of that experience. So they go out there and, and play at a, at a high level. And, um, you know, but we've got some young freshmen. I can take Robert Scott, Thomas Schrader. Those guys are competing for jobs. Those guys I'm really, really pleased with what I've seen, uh, not just from their skill set, but from their mindset. And that's something that 
uh, to be able to have that sense of maturity, uh, the competitiveness that they bring, I mean, they are they're definitely right there in the competition. Mike, when we spoke to you on Saturday, you said there were some conversations about players regarding the decision to opt out. I'm just wondering if there have been any follow-ups or developments with, with players who've decided anything on that. Uh, no, there's been there, there's been a few conversations, but uh, there's not been anything anything so you know, solidified or finalized. Um, and you know, we're here we're here for our guys. And uh, at the end of the day, you know, support support guys and, and what their uh, what their choice is. Uh, there's um, we had one young man that, that really considered it, and, and you know, after being away for a few days, you know, talking to his family, he decided that he wanted to wanted to continue on. Felt very very comfortable, um, you know, with, with what was going on. And so uh, you know, I'm going to support them in, in that as well. So um, it is. Uh, I think we're we're in a good place, but uh, we're, we're just here to be supportive of our players. Next question will be Allison Kobe. Did it get Hey, Coach. I just you've been critical of the guys' work ethic this week and wanting to see more out of them. Has that gotten better? And also, who have you who have you seen step up as a leader during this fall camp? You know, I, I thought I thought Monday was a, a day that did not meet our standard, and it was one that um, we challenged we challenged the guys to uh, to what their response would be um, and what they're you know putting willing to put on film each and every day. And, um, the, you know, I, I'm I'm critical of guys when I don't see their best because that is the expectation. We want guys to give their best in everything that they do, coaches, players, everybody involved, everybody associated with our program. There is that standard, and uh, you know I, I really like the response that I that I you know that I've seen the last couple of days. Um, you know from that, uh, you know guys like uh, Sunday Samuel, you know Emmett Rice, the runner Warner, um, you know really done a done a nice job. Um, you know. You, you look, uh, you know, offensively. I mean, there's there's a lot, a lot of competition. I think I know I mentioned James uh, the other day. Uh, you look at the way that that he works. Um, they're really that quarterback position. Uh, the way that they work every day. I mean, we they've got to be the, the the living example on offense of what that expectation is. And um, whether it's the way that they sprint, sprinting on the field in between drills, or everything that they're doing, the ownership they take up. Of, uh, of mistakes that might be made and, and the corrections that go with that. Um, I'm re really pleased with, uh, with you know, what I'm seeing there. Uh, Monte Taylor Love, I think, is, uh, and he's done a lot of good things. And uh, you know, he's, uh, even though he's a newcomer into our program, uh, he definitely brings a right mindset and approach. Uh, there's Washington is, is, is really going up. Uh, you know, it's, it's uh, I, like, I like the group that we have. It's just that constant, uh, uh, development and uh, you know push of going out there and giving their all. Uh, Coach, when you uh, you know obviously with the new regime, everything's going to be wide open. I imagine every preseason camp positions are, are going to be wide open. But um, if you have older players who have played a lot and then younger guys come in um, and and pass them on the depth chart, what's the key to keeping those older players engaged and also? Uh, still competing and with the idea that they can get back uh, later in the season. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's you know, obviously the process of going out and being their best. And uh, you, you said that to be a competitor. Uh, you know, it, it, if we have older players that do not compete. If somebody comes in and beats them out, then they're probably not the players that we want playing for us. Um, you know, that's that it's part of life. Everybody's every year we're going to try to go and you know, bring in guys that uh, are, are going to push every player that we have on our team um, and uh, hopefully recruiting to, to a higher level to help our players continue to develop, uh, you know, when they're here. And um, you know, that's it's part of the process. And that's something that uh, you know, I really like. And, and you guys need to be challenged. If you're not, if guys feel that comfortable in their role and where they are, um, you know, we're not doing our job as coaches, and uh, you know, there's going to be competition in every position. Uh, you know, and, and guys got to live up to that standard. And, and with that, when when you see players that you know maybe their role is reduced because of that competition, you know, I want to see them take their game to another level, and uh, that provides them a chance to to be better than they've been. Last question will be Avalon from Morgan. Coach, inside sources with Chuba. Uh, I think one of his parents went on social media and said that uh, he underwent surgery and they put a, a, a six-week timetable. I don't know if you want to 
uh, disagree with mom, but is that pretty accurate? Yeah, I'm not uh, not into disagreeing with uh, the really good inside sources, um, but uh, you know we're we're not going to get into the many specifics of, of his. And obviously, you know, if a parent wants to uh, speak on behalf of a player on uh, what where they are. You know, obviously respect that. Uh, um, but I'm, I'm not going to get into many specifics with the, the actual uh, uh, injury. And uh, you know, we're we're excited about everything that we've heard um, in regards to. Uh, where Chuba is and, and what that will be. So we're, we're working through that and, uh, you know, feel very confident for what that's going to look like this year. Thank you. Thank you, Asim.